Good morning and welcome to the fifth lecture on rotation. So, uh, last time we have been discussing about one lemma. So, we will continue with that lemma, continue with that lemma. or 3 into 3 matrix is a rotation operator If it is an orthogonal matrix, uh, we have already discussed about what the orthogonal matrix is. And has determinant plus 1. We have a short proof for this. So, let us consider a frame in which we have two vect arbitrary vectors v 1 and v 2 angle between them is theta. So, obviously, we can observe that if we rotate the reference frame say this is e 1 e 2. So, if we rotate the reference frame the angle between these two vectors will not change. So, this implies that v 1 dot v 2 is an invariant because theta is fixed and v 1 magnitude v 2 magnitude this is also these are constants and so they are not changing. So, in the vector notation as we have written this implies that v 1 tilde transpose v 2 tilde this is an invariant quantity. Now, if we give rotation to this frame e 1 and e 2. Okay. So, rotating frame rotating the reference frame let us say the corresponding rotation matrix is let us assume that matrix is C. Okay. Okay. Therefore, in the new frame the vector okay, we have taken this inner product we could have also written this as v 2 tilde transpose v 1 tilde this is an invariant quantity. So, it is a equivalent. Now, if we rotate the frame so by rotating the frame let us say that the v 1 vector in the rotated frame is represented by c times v 1 tilde okay, where we this side we are writing in matrix notation.
and similarly the v2 vector it will be denoted by in the new frame okay and therefore this implies v2 tilde c times v1 tilde or v2 tilde whatever the way we write c times v2 tilde transpose times c times v1 tilde this must be equal to this must be equal to v1 tilde v2 tilde transpose v1 tilde so uh, this quantity will be equal to this quantity because the vector the angle between these two vectors it's not changing and the vector length itself it's not changing okay and the only the frame is rotated therefore this must be equal to this quantity and we can write this as v2 tilde transpose and we know that c transpose c will be equal to i if it is a rotation matrix okay so this we are this is what we are looking for so we can rearrange this thing so we have taken it on this side and taken out v2 tilde transpose v1 tilde transpose and the right hand side this is a null vector okay now this already we have mentioned that v2 tilde and v1 tilde they are arbitrary and therefore to hold this it's required that c transpose c minus i because the right hand side is null Uh, null vector and these are not null vectors okay the, these two are arbitrary and therefore this quantity must satisfy this that is a null matrix okay and this implies c transpose c equal to i and this in turn implies c c transpose equal to i as we have proved earlier also okay and therefore this implies that as it was required that c transpose c should be i in this lemma so therefore c this is a rotation matrix matrix provided c determinant this equal to plus 1 okay so we have c times c transpose this equal to i and if we take the determinant of this okay and determinant of the transport transpose is the same as the determinant of the original matrix therefore this quantity equal to 1 and c equal to plus minus 1 so given this we have started with uh, assuming that if c c transpose equal to c transpose c equal to i proved in this lemma and then once we have got this then we are getting this quantity now out of this the plus 1 c determinant this equal to plus 1 this corresponds to to right hand trier while c equal to minus 1 this corresponds to left handed system therefore we reject 
c equal to minus 1 and we retain only c equal to plus 1 and therefore, whatever the we have stated in the lemma. So, this is proved that this uh, c c transpose equal to um, or c transpose c equal to i and c determinant is also equal to plus 1 and why this minus 1 has been rejected we will see on the next page. Let us consider a example, consider an example zero zero minus one. So this matrix if we do C transpose C or C transpose C equal to one zero 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 one 0, 0, 0, minus 1 it will remain the same and on once we take this product, okay, so this will be 1, this you can see that rest others will be 0, okay. in this column the row the same way and here also this is taking product of this and this, this turns out to be 0, this and this, this also turns out to be 0 and this is minus 1. So, here this minus 1 and looking into this determinant, uh, this is plus 1. Okay. So, looking into this determinant, so this is satisfying your i, okay. but so, all of them are plus 1. What about the determinant of this? So, determinant of this is 1 times minus 1 minus 0, this is the only one existing here. So, this is minus 1, but this does not satisfy the other property that is C transpose C equal to C C transpose this equal to I, okay, which is very much clear as we take the last one which is uh, Essentially, we have to look into 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0, minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. So, therefore, C C transpose is I, the identity matrix, but the determinant is not plus 1, but rather it is a minus 1. And this matrix, this belongs to the left hand triad, left hand system, left handed. System. As we can observe from the operation on C by any vector, say let us assume that this is operating on some vector nu, where we will assume this to be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, and here we assume this new vector to be 1, 1, 1, means it is belonging to. So, let us say this is the x, y and z and this we are write as z prime, this as the x prime and this is y prime. So, we have any point here which is 1, 1, 1 and on this then you are operating by, so that simply implies that there is a vector from this point to this point, this is your vector v okay. and you are operating by this the rotation matrix which is given by 1 1 minus 1 here the diagonal elements all of diagonal elements are 0. So, this implies new prime will become this is 1 this is 1 and this gets reduced to minus 1. Okay. So, this point gets mapped to the point in the which is reflected in the x y plane and this is the point here 1 1 minus 1. So, we can see that 
the x y and z prime it does not form a right hand triad okay this forms a left hand triad so therefore if your c determinant of the c matrix this equal to minus 1 so that means it does not satisfy our requirement of the lemma so this is belonging to the left hand left handed system and we reject it therefore and reject it ok. So, if, uh, we have now proved the lemma then we look into the some basic of the angular representation. Euler angles. So, let us say this is the x y z frame and this is the origin here and this is the right handed triad. So, rotation about this x axis will represent it by theta 1, rotation about this axis will represent by theta 2 rotation about the z axis represented by theta 3. So, it is a common that uh, theta 3 is a quite often represented by psi, okay. theta 2 it is a represented by theta and theta 1 is represented by phi. So, these are called the Euler angles, okay. but here we stick to this general representation theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 because it is a uh, quite often we use these notations psi phi for some other angles then uh, there will be confusion. So, we will always keep theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 as the uh, angular displacement. So, you can see that we have 3 degree of uh, freedom in this system in the rotational freedom and that we can represent by theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. Now, how do we represent uh, rotate? It is a matter of concern like uh, say if, uh, I have this mobile okay, or say if, uh, this is a box. Okay. Okay, this is a box and upside here it is a written uh, some word. Okay. So, I keep it like this. So, let us say the x axis is along this direction, y axis along this direction, z axis along this direction. So, this forms a right handed triad as we can see by the right hand rule. Now, I want to push it into a configuration which is represented like this. Okay. So, how we can do it? I have to bring it into this way. Okay. So, here I can rotate it like this. So, this rotation is about the z axis. Okay. So, first rotation we are giving the z axis and this axis we have taken as the x axis. So, next rotation we will uh, depending on uh, what we are looking for. So, from here we want to go into this direction. So, first like about the z and the second rotation about like this about the x axis. So, that gives me this orientation. Now, is it possible to get into the same orientation using some other way? So, let us look into this one first rotation about the x axis okay, and this is your y axis now this is the y axis. So, next rotation about the y axis. So, we get to the same orientation by these two different rotations. So, here what do I want to tell you that we can choose this rotations in different sequences and by giving different magnitude to them we can get to the same orientation. So, this Euler angle representation of any orientation it is not unique. Okay. This is a very, very basic concept which we must understand that this Euler angle representation it is not unique. We can get to the same orientation 
by giving different amount of values to psi, theta and phi, it may be positive, it may be negative. Now, also we have already learned that about say the, this is the x axis. So, about the x axis we cannot give two sequential rotation means first by theta 1 and then by theta 1 prime. So, this will simply imply theta 1 plus theta 1 prime. This already we have proved. So, this kind of rotation is ruled out. Okay. So, the first rotation out of this 3 I can choose in 3 ways. Okay. So, this is your first rotation. The next rotation I cannot choose again say the about the theta 3. Okay. If I choose this means it is like the same thing, it is the same rotation of higher magnitude. Okay. So, that is ruled out. So, next I have to choose from these two. Okay. So, from these two I can choose in two ways. So, this is your second rotation. Now, once we have done this, suppose that we have chosen this, then we are left with these two, because first choosing about the third and then choosing about the first and then I choose about any of these two, okay, either the z or the y. So, it is not the rotation about the same axis, means this is about the x axis. So, this will be along the y and the z axis and therefore, the next rotation is along the 2, means we are not taking any sequen rotation sequentially about the same axis, means there are total 12 ways of choosing uh, this orientation representation, means uh, using the Euler angles we can achieve to the same orientation in 12 different ways, but we have to definitely give different magnitude, few of them just like here in this case uh, for this uh, box we considered from this orientation to this orientation, it was a simple one that first we rotated about this, this is the x axis rotation, then the y axis rotation, okay. z axis rotation is 0. The other way we did here z axis rotation and then the x axis rotation, y axis rotation here in this case is 0. So, this way you can compose positive negative of course, the other way this is a much simpler case, other cases will be very uh, difficult to look into uh, look into physically. So, uh, this is your third rotation, but uh, this remains a theoretical fact that we can get to any orientation in different ways and how do we represent that orientation? It is not unique, okay. but however, if you choose one of the rotation procedures say the first rotation about the z axis then the next orient rotation about the y axis and next ro rotation about the x axis then is and stick to this throughout your computation then of course, you get a whatever the result you get that will be unique there will be no confusion anywhere. So, if, uh, we are ruling here ruling out the configuration like 3 1 1. So, this is ruled out similarly 3 2 2 this kind of rotation this will be ruled out or 1 3 3 these are ruled out because these two are about the same axis and therefore, this uh, these two are not allowed. Okay. And uh, how do we represent the rotation? We have already looked into so, uh, say the rotation if I represent it like this that first rotation I give about the third axis which here in this case 3 will represent the z axis, 2 will represent the y axis and 1 will represent the x axis. So, we will write it like this. So, we are giving sequential rotations like this. means first rotation about the third axis, second rotation about the second axis and third about the first axis. So, uh, let us say that I have any vector nu okay, and I am operating on this vector by r 3 means rotation about the third axis 
and this gives me nu tilde prime okay now i will operate on this vector okay so what we have done that i have a reference frame this is a vector here v and this is 1 2 and these are the three axis and i am rotating this axis so first rotation i am giving about the third one okay and as a result in the new coordinate system for the new reference system we have new is represented as new prime then the next rotation i give about the y axis which we are represented by 2 so this will operate on new prime and from here we will get as new double prime so new prime is nothing but from this place r3 times new tilde okay so this is new tilde double prime similarly we give the rotation about the first axis so we'll operate on new tilde double prime and this gives me new tilde triple prime so and then putting new tilde double prime from this place so this becomes r1 r2 r3 okay so once you have given this three rotation general rotation okay after that this uh, your original vector it appears like this its components in the rotated reference frame it will change so here theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 and we are well aware that the r1 which is the rotation about the first axis it will be given by 1 0 0 0 0 already we have discussed this cos theta 1 sin theta 1 minus sin theta 1 times cos theta 1. Okay. Similarly, the r 2 and r 3 this has to be written and once we insert into this we get the transformed vector okay. or the coordinates of the vector nu in the rotated reference frame. Therefore, this r that becomes r 1 r 2 r 3 1 0 0 and we will use a shorter notation for representing this the cos theta will write as c theta and we will tag as theta 1 theta 2 whatever it is and sin theta as s theta. So, this is the shorter notation. So, this becomes c theta for this one this is c theta 1 s theta 1 0 minus s theta 1 c theta 1. So, remember that we are operating from this side this is first operating on the new vector then this will operate then this will operate. Okay. Thereafter for the y here in this case this is c theta 2 c theta 2 and this gets reduced to s theta 2 and here minus s theta 2 as already we have previously discussed for the z 1 and we have then c theta 3 c theta 3 and do the matrix multiplication once we carry out this so i will write here the final result without uh, taking much time so this will can be indicated as let us say theta 1 we further reduce this notation to uh, c will represent c theta 1 we'll use this representation c theta 1 as c1 s theta 1 as s1 similarly other c theta 2 equal to c 2 and s theta 2 equal to s 2. So, uh, writing becomes here simplified. So, this will be indicated by c 2 c 3 s 1 s 2 c 3 minus c 1 s 3 you can check it verify it.
Yes. So, taking doing this matrix multiplication, it yields us this R. This is the rotation matrix. Okay. Now, if you take a different sequen sequence, let us say R2, R1, R3. Okay. So, this sequence will give you another matrix which will be different from this. Okay. But as per our discussion, that whatever be the way of rotation, okay, if we give proper magnitude to these values, okay, somewhere one may be uh, theta 1 may be positive in one case, another case it may be negative, and so on. So, by giving that, we can come to the same orientation because this orientation. The orientation representation using these Euler angles, they are not unique, and therefore it can be represented in many ways. Out of this, this is one of the way. This can be another way of doing this. Another way we can write it like as R3, R1, R3, and so on. Okay. So no sequential rotation about the same axis. Here third axis, first axis, and then the third axis. But here this one creates problem. When the rotation involves are very small, okay. so this kind of cases quite often. If the angles angles involved are large, so you can use this. Otherwise, you should stick to this particular one. Okay. In the satellite control, quite often, uh, if you have to orient the satellite. Okay, from initial position to a final position. So, uh, you can do only using these two rotations that is about the third axis and the one ax first axis means if you have two controllers along the these two axis then you may be able to work it out, but you have to look further because it is a complicated if you rotate about the third axis it may happen that the satellite is rotating about the second axis also because of the inertial coupling. So, those things are very complex and uh, must be resolved. But however, this is preferable only if the angles involved are large, while here in this case even if the angles are small you can work with this. So, uh, thank you very much, we stop for this lecture here and we will continue in the next lecture.